There's another molecule which also affects the binding of oxygen and hemoglobin, and that molecule is carbon dioxide. And what I like to do is separate this out into two different effects. One effect is the indirect effect, and the second one is the direct effect. Now before I do that, I might need to go back and talk about the pH, which we have up front at this point in time. So if we have a change in pH, we're going to have a change in hydronium ion concentration. So if the pH decreases, what happens to the hydronium ion concentration? The answer is it increases because they're inversely related. So what happens when we have a higher concentration of protons or hydronium ions present in solution, they're going to start binding to the conjugate bases, which can be a variety of different amino acids within the molecule. In doing so, we're just going to start stabilizing the deoxy form. If I stabilize the deoxy form, then I make it harder for oxygen to bind. Therefore, the curve will shift to the right, and the P50 will increase the same sequence that we saw before. This pH effect is called the Bohr effect. And you see it right here on this diagram. And I want you to notice that these are relatively small changes in pH. We're going to 6.8 to 7 to 7.2 to 7.4 7.6. And you see that there's big changes in the saturation of hemoglobin, or big changes in its ability to bind oxygen. This is very critical in terms of, of its function, and that's why maintaining the pH of the blood is a very important process. We, if this went down to five, it probably would be dead. You, just, you have a very narrow range over which you're allowed to have pH. So that's the Bohr effect effect of pH. Now the Bohr effect does not require any particular source of those protons. Anything can do. Anything can do. Now let's go back to the carbon dioxide. And I said it has indirect and the direct effect. And indirect feeds very nicely on this, so that's why I want to go back to it. In the indirect effect, what happens? If you have high carbon dioxide, it makes sense then that you're going to have high hydronium ion concentration because we're adding carbon dioxide, which becomes carbonic acid, which should be driving the pH down. If we drive pH down, increase the hydronium concentration, then immediately we're going to slide over to this effect. And so we're going to see that the oxy form stabilized, the oxygen affinity is going to be decreased, the curve is going to shift to the right, and the P50 will increase. Domino, 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 domino. That's the indirect. It's not working directly, it's working indirectly through the protons. The direct effect, on the other hand, what you have there is the carbon dioxide is going to bind to the N terminus, forming a specific molecule called a carbonate adduct. And doing so, guess what it does? You're right, it does stabilize the deoxy form. You stabilize the deoxy form, what do you do next? What do you do next? Well, do you in decrease the oxygen affinity? If I decrease the oxygen affinity, what do you do next? The curve's going to shift which way? Shift the right. If it shifts the right, that means the P50 has to increase. So you can see these all end up in the same dominoes. The difference is how they get started. How they get started. So that's what you want to concentrate on when you're looking at these things. And then finally, we have carbon monoxide. Carbon monoxide story is a little bit more difficult to understand because when you have carbon monoxide which binds to hemoglobin, what happens, it sort of locks the hemoglobin into the oxidated form. So it makes it so much easier for oxygen to bind that it never comes off. And so you add, so you add, uh, if you have a little bit of CO2, or CO, a carbon monoxide, please, uh, it's going to bind oxygen, fill it up with oxygen, and so the blood will be very, very red. However, it never gets to the tissue because it never will release it. And so, and as we know, carbon monoxide is a pretty bad poison we have to worry about. 
Okay, so let's put this all together. Let's take a look at the next slide and we'll see what we've got. Okay, so here's whole blood right here. And here's hemoglobin, and the typical abbreviation for hemoglobin is big H, little b. And here we have 2, 3 bisphosphoglycerate and carbon dioxide. And you see, if we just take hemoglobin and those two molecules, it looks very much like whole blood. So it's going to be working the same way. Then if we remove the 2, 3 bisphosphoglycerate, guess what? It shifts to the left, right? Because adding it would shift to the right. And you see how much of a shift we get. Now if we, uh, uh, we lose the CO2, we also get a shift. What's interesting is if we take both of these away, it shifts way, way down here. It almost looks like my book has very strong affinity. So you can see that carbon dioxide and 2,3-bisphosphoglycerate are very important regulators of oxygen binding. And you cannot live without having that regulation going on. So at this point in time, I think we can uh, mute the slide. And I hope that we can still see it. Okay, so we have, as on this side, we're going to have our tissue. And the other side, we're going to have our lungs. Okay, so let's talk about the conditions of those two places. We have to worry about pH, CO2, and oxygen. If we go to the tissue, what is the tissue doing? It's using oxygen, right, to make energy, which uh, gets, and we're going to oxidize our carbons, we're going to make CO2. So if we look at CO2, what, what's going to happen to levels of CO2? Is it going to go up or down? Answer is it's going to be up. If we ask about oxygen, is it up or down? It's going to be lower, isn't it? Because we're using it. At the same time, the, the metabolic conditions are going to take the pH and are going to decrease it. That makes sense to everybody. Now let's go on the other side, the lungs. What's the lungs busy doing? The lungs busy bringing in bringing in oxygen, and it's getting rid of, get rid of CO2, right? So if we look at oxygen, what's happening to oxygen? It is increasing. If we look at the carbon dioxide, it is decreasing. And because we are expelling CO2, which is an acid, what's going to happen to the pH? We take away acid. The pH has to so those are the conditions at the two different extremes. So let's talk about hemoglobin. Again, how many heme groups are in hemoglobin? The answer is four. So you can think about hemoglobin as, uh, as four buckets. In each bucket I can put oxygen. So if I'm going to be a hemoglobin molecule, just think I'm holding four buckets in my hand. Each one I can put an oxygen in, right? So what I do is I come up to the lungs, I'm going to fill my four buckets because that's high concentration of oxygen, and then I'm going to be carried down to the tissue, which is busy using oxygen. And so what the tissue is going to do is going to grab molecules of oxygen as it needs it. Now if they were independently binding, there was no cooperativity going on, then this tissue might take two of these. But that's it. And so I end up by carrying back to the lungs half empty hemoglobin. Not very efficient, is it? But we know that because of the cooperativity, if I have my four buckets and I go down to this end, then as soon as I give up one oxygen, it becomes easier to give up the second one. So as soon as the one pops off, the second one's going to pop off. And then conversely, as soon as the second one, the third one pop off. And the fourth one comes off even easier. So as soon as I deliver one, I'm going to deliver all four. I'm going to be empty, aren't I? I'm going to be empty. 
So now when I go up here, then I can be very efficient. In fact, once I get up here, as soon as I'm putting in one oxygen, it makes it easier for me to do the second one and easier for the third one. So I'm going to automatically load up all four. Otherwise, maybe not all four would go in. So you can see how the cooperativity helps deliver oxygen from the lungs to the tissues. But we need to talk about some other things going on. So let's go back to the tissue. What did we say was happening to the carbon dioxide? It's going up. So if I'm sitting here with my hemoglobin buckets and the carbon dioxide is rising, what's going to happen to the oxygen affinity? It's going to decrease. If it decreases, what happens to the ability to deliver oxygen? It becomes even better, doesn't it? Similarly, what's happening in pH? pH is dropping, becoming more acidic, becomes more acidic. What happens? The binding decreases, so I get more oxygen. So you can see both the CO2 and the pH and the O2 help deliver oxygen even more efficiently than it would be otherwise. Now I'm going to go back to the lungs. What happens in the lungs? When the lungs, I've got low CO2, don't I? And so the carbonic, carbonate adducts, which I've carried with me, by the way, are going to be released. So the CO2 is going to decrease. What happens to oxygen binding? It increases. pH is going to rise. What happens to oxygen binding? It's going to increase. So both the CO2 and the pH work to make the binding more efficient and easier to get on. So you can see how all these work together to help deliver oxygen from the lungs to the tissue. Now there's one thing I haven't talked about, that's 2 3 bisphosphoglycerate. And we said that 2 3 bisphosphoglycerate works on the deoxy form. So inside the red blood cells where we find the hemoglobin, you also find the 2 3 bisphosphoglycerate. So what's going to happen as we come down here is believed that when the oxygen leaves, then the 2 3 bisphosphoglycerate binds to that center cavity and locks it into the deoxy form. And then when we come up here, the addition of oxygen unlocks the 2 3 bisphosphoglycerate, so it sort of dissociates and stays within the cell. So it helps, if you will, like a light switch to keep it in that particular position. And then again, adding all of these together to help the oxygen delivery. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is a quick picture about how the, trans how the transport auction occurs based upon the properties of myoglobin and hemoglobin. Thank you very much.